Hey guys, Jake here coming at you with another math lesson today. Here's the problem I'm going to be showing you today. Just another related rates problem. Um, I have done a handful of other related rates problems that I would recommend that maybe you check those out before you watch this video, just because uh, I'm going to go through this one a little bit quicker. Some of the other videos I've made are a bit longer and more detailed. So if you you know kind of need that extra explanation, go check those out. I'll put a link up here and down in the description so you can check them out. Um, but let's jump into this one. So we have a kite 100 feet above the ground. It's moving horizontally at a speed of eight feet per second. At what rate is the angle between the string and the horizontal, which is basically like the ground, decreasing when 200 feet of string has been let out? So just like all my other related rates problems, I'm going to follow the same four step process. And the first of those four steps is to draw a sketch of what you're dealing with. So let's start with that. So first of all, let's just kind of draw the ground. And then let's say we have this person standing here flying this kite and it's coming up at an angle like this. Okay. Here's where our kite is kind of at the tip of the string. And let's just draw a line which will be perpendicular to the ground because this is just meant to measure basically the height of the kite above the ground so this line here represents the string right this is the string that's attached to the kite this is the horizontal or the ground and then this line isn't actually represented by any physical thing it's just meant to help us kind of guide us so that we can relate these different measurements geometrically somehow and the easiest way to do that is with a triangle. Um, that's kind of a good, good tip whenever you have a related rates problem where you're dealing with, you know, the angle between the ground and some other straight line type of object, like a string in this case. Um, turning that into a triangle is a really good place to start because, you know, we know a lot about triangles using a handful of different things. You know, Pythagorean theorem, for example, we can use sine, cosine, tangent. Um, Soka Toa, that kind of thing. So there's a lot of different ways we can relate angles and side lengths of triangles. So that's a good shape to kind of create out of whatever situation you're given. But what the question asked us about was the angle between the string and the horizontal. So the angle between the string and this and the ground is represented by this angle here. We'll just call that theta. It doesn't really matter what you call it, but that's what we're going to label it. We also know that the kite is 100 feet above the ground. So that's important. We know that this side is always going to be 100 feet. We also know the kite is moving horizontally at eight feet per second. So it's going to be moving that way. The important thing about that is since the kite is moving horizontally, we know that it's always going to remain 100 feet above the ground. So basically this point of the triangle is moving horizontally. So as a result, this angle is going to be decreasing and this string is going to be getting longer as it stretches further and further away. But this side of the triangle is always going to be 100 feet. So this side we don't need to call a variable because it's not varying. It's not a variable. It's a constant 100 feet. However, this side length of our triangle, if we imagine this side of the triangle just moving this way at eight feet per second, this side is going to be growing and this side is going to be growing. So we do want to use variables for those other two sides because they're going to be changing. So let's just call this side A and this side H. Then the last piece of information we know is we're looking at kind of the one instant when H is 200 feet. So it is important to note that this is a variable because it is changing, but the one kind of instant we're going to be looking at is the instant when H is 200 feet. So I'll kind of make note of both of those facts here. This one, we don't need a variable because it's not changing. This one we do, but we do have that one measurement about it. So this pretty much lays out everything that was given to us. Now what we need to do is come up with our equation. That's the second step of any related rates problem. Come up with your equation and then we'll use that to figure out the rates of change and how these rates are related. So what you want to think about when you're coming up with your equation, first of all, which variable needs to be in our equation? Well, what are we looking for here? We're trying to find the rate that the angle between the string and the horizontal is decreasing. So that's what is represented by the rate of change of this angle right here. So basically the thing that we are trying to get to, our goal, is the rate of change of theta with respect to time. So since we know that we want to get to this, 
our equation should not have any d anything dt it should not have any rates of change but if we put a theta in our equation we will be able to get to a d theta dt by taking implicit differentiation so we know that our equation needs to have a theta in it the other thing we want to think about is which other pieces we know some information about well we know this side length so it would be appropriate to include this side length in our equation we know some information about this side length it's going to be 200 feet at the instant we're caring about since we know that this is a right triangle and we know both of these side lengths we could use pythagorean theorem to figure out this side length so we also do have some information about the length of this side so really any of our side lengths are okay to have in our equation however there's two of these sides that we know about not only the length of the side but also the rate of change of that length or how fast the side length is changing we know that this side length is not changing so we know its rate of change is zero basically because it's constant and then we also know since the kite is moving eight feet per second horizontally we know that this horizontal side length is is increasing at eight feet per second so we know the rate of change of A, we know the rate of change of this side, we don't know the rate of change of H. So H is probably not the best option to include, just because we don't know anything about its rate of change. But we know a lot about this side and this side. So what you want to think about is what can we use to relate this angle with this side and this side of a right triangle? Well, we can use SOKATOA, the sine, cosine, and tangent which basically what that little uh, thing tells us is if we take sine of an angle, that would be equivalent to using so, which is SOH, so opposite over hypotenuse. Ka, which is CAH, tells us cosine would relate the adjacent side to the hypotenuse. So both sine and cosine would include the hypotenuse, which we don't really know that much about. But tangent, which is TOA, TOA, which means tangent, includes the opposite and the adjacent side. So if we consider the tangent of this angle, that's going to include the opposite side and the adjacent side, and not the hypotenuse. So if we make our equation include tangent of theta, tangent of theta is going to be the opposite side over the adjacent side, which is 100 over A. So now we've just come up with an equation which relates the angle that we know has to be in our equation, as well as the two sides that we know quite a bit of information about. So this is a perfect equation to use. So that's all we need for the second step. Now the third step is gonna be the implicit differentiation step. So now we just have to take the derivative with respect to time of both sides of this equation. Before we do that, let's rewrite this so that we don't have to use a fraction Remember, 100 divided by A would be the same as 100 times A to the negative first power. So if we consider this as our function, we can just use the power rule when we're taking the derivative of the right side of our equation. To find the derivative of tangent of theta, what you could do is use the fact that tangent of anything is the same as sine of that thing over cosine of that thing. So tangent is the same as sine over cosine. So if you wanted to find the derivative of this, we could use quotient rule. I'm going to kind of skip through that, but taking the derivative of sine over cosine would be 1 over cosine squared of theta. However, since we're taking the derivative with respect to time, we have to use the chain rule, and we also have to multiply that by the derivative of what's inside our parentheses. So we would get one over cosine squared of theta. And then we have to multiply this by the derivative of theta, what's inside our parentheses. The derivative of theta with respect to time is just d theta dt. So that's just using implicit differentiation. And now taking the derivative with respect to time over here, we could use the power rule and the chain rule because we're taking the derivative of a with respect to time we have to treat a as a function of time, which means we'll have to use the chain rule. So bringing the negative one down in front, keeping the inside the same, keeping our a as is, lower the power by one, and then multiply this by the chain rule by the, in, the derivative of our inside function, which is just gonna be dA dt. So 
This is what we're left with after applying the implicit differentiation step. So now we're going to be able to use this and we need to solve for our desired rate of change, which is d theta dt. So to get d theta dt all by itself, all we have to do is multiply both sides by cosine squared of theta. And that'll cancel there. And then we'll multiply our other side by cosine squared theta. And doing that would leave us with d theta dt equals negative 100 a to the negative 2 times dA dt times cosine squared theta. So now all we have to do is plug in these other values. So we need to plug in a, dA dt, and theta, and then that'll leave us with our answer. So the issue is we don't know the value of a, but like I said before, we could use Pythagorean theorem to figure that out. So Pythagorean theorem tells us the hypotenuse squared will equal the sum of the squares of each of these sides. So basically that just means a squared plus 100 squared will give us our hypotenuse squared. And we know at the moment we're looking at our hypotenuse is 200. So this will equal 200 squared. Square these, subtract this over to the other side. And then square root both sides. That'll leave us with a equaling 100 times the square root of three. So we know this is the value of a. So we can plug that in here. We also know that a is increasing at eight feet per second, which is exactly what dA dt represents. dA dt is just the rate of change of a with respect to time, how quickly a is changing. We know it's increasing at eight feet per second. So this is gonna be eight. And then we also need to figure out theta. So to figure out theta, we can just go back to our original equation. So what we can do is consider what we had before we took the derivative or the implicit differentiation step, which is tan of theta was 100 over a. Now we know a is 100 times the square root of three. So we can change this to 100 root three. The 100s will cancel and we'll get one over root three. One over root three is actually on the unit circle. So we can use the unit circle to figure out that if tan of theta equals one over root three, that must mean that theta equals pi over six. So we know theta is pi over six. We know a is 100 root three. We know d a d t is eight. So we can plug all that in and see what we get. So doing that will give us d theta dt equals 100, negative 100 over 100 root three squared times eight times cosine squared of pi over six. Then if we simplify all this, you know, use our unit circle to figure out cosine of pi over six, square it, multiply that by eight, square this, simplify this fraction, you know, just apply algebraic techniques at this point to simplify all this or just plug it into a calculator and that'll tell us that d theta dt equals negative one over 50. So remember the question asked us to find the rate that the angle between the string and the horizontal was decreasing. So the wording decreasing was already included in there. We just figured out that the rate of this change was negative one over 50 radians per second. Since the question asked how fast is it decreasing, we would be able to say it's decreasing at a rate of one over 50 radians per second. So note that our answer is actually a positive number because it's decreasing at a positive rate. The negative is essentially included within the word decreasing.